Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. I am here in beautiful Tampa, Florida. Uh, I've recently moved back from China to the US. I'm going through that whole reverse culture shock thing. I, you know, I've been living abroad for about 13 years and I was in China for three and a half. And you know, when you get into a new situation, you start to adapt, you know, you have the culture shock and I've made lots of videos about that. Coming back, you think, oh, you know, it'll be like returning to home, like, you know, everything is normal. And actually, uh, I'm just finding some things like that I totally forgot were amazing that were here that I, I didn't even realize that I missed. I've been traveling the world alone. So the thing that I missed most was my family. And since I've been back, you know, I've been able to see family and friends and people I haven't seen in years. And, you know, living in the same time zone as people, you can communicate with them, you can call them. And, you know, you don't have to worry about them calling you at three o'clock in the morning thinking, you know, you can chat. So the next thing that I missed is specific to having lived in China where we can't drink water out the tap. You know, here I can go to the bathroom in a restaurant and drink the water and know that I'm not going to die. I'm not going to get lead poisoning. I'm going to be completely safe drinking the water out of the tap. I'm here in Tampa, Florida. You know, if you want to go ahead and leave me a emoji icon with the sunglasses and solidarity for this amazing, wonderful landscape that I'm experiencing. <sighs> the air, this fresh air is beautiful. I can breathe. I can, I can, you know, inhale without worrying if my lungs are going to, you know, smoke 10 packs of cigarettes with each breath. And having lived in Beijing, that was my life. And I did lots of videos about air pollution. Go ahead and check those out. Some of you may have heard of the Great Firewall of China. Well, I lived it. You know, you have a VPN or whatever to get around that and you're at the mercy of how fast the VPN is that day. Being back here in America, I mean, I can just get on YouTube whenever I feel like it. I can get on Google. My watch, the voice assistant, it wouldn't work in China. And now I can just bloop and it works perfectly. No limitations on the internet and that is lovely. So what am I doing back here in the U.S.? I am actually a real estate investor. That's what I did before I left the U.S. 13 years ago. I'm an entrepreneur at heart and being able to understand the country's economic system, being able to you know, research laws and uh, speak the language and just being able to start my own business is something that just, it fuels me, it motivates me. And that's something that always bothered me in China. It's really difficult to start your own business. Of course you can do you know, the side hustles and all that, which I did, but you know, being able to start a legitimate business and, and grow it and make income in America is, is really simple. And, and I miss having that option and I'm glad to be back doing that. I moved to China because I wanted to be with Chinese people. I wanted to be in their culture. I wanted to be with, around the language. I wanted to be with them. And coming back to the US, I just, I forgot how much I love diversity. There's Chinese people here. I mean, I can find Japanese, Thai, you know, any kind of Asian. There's South Americans, there's Africans, Europeans, Native Americans. We have this diversity that is just unparalleled in China. And, you know, the things that come with that, the differences in culture that you get to grasp, you know, without even having to leave your home country. And one thing that I struggle with in Europe, especially, but then China just took it up to a whole nother level was smoking in public. And in the U.S., you know, public smoking is, is, even if it's not banned, it's usually frowned upon or people will be courteous enough to just kind of go away or downwind. They understand that it's not a habit everybody enjoys and they'll take the necessary precautions to get away from you. You know, in China, they'll walk up to you and blow smoke in your face thinking that they're being friendly. And, you know, in Europe, it's ubiquitous. Being back here in the U.S., I can enjoy a coffee on a terrace, not worrying about, you know, if the person next to me is going to light up or not. So I traveled around China for three and a half years, you know, different areas had different food and I was trying cuisines that I'd never heard of. And I just, I loved it. The food was amazing. But one thing that I did miss that is Chinese food are egg rolls. Because in China, they don't eat egg rolls. It doesn't exist. You're going to be hard pressed to find an egg roll in China. I don't know why, but I really miss that. <laughs> So one of the reasons that you can't drink the water in China is because the piping infrastructure is, is not good. And so this also means that you can't flush toilet tissue down the toilet. And you can do that here. Something small and you probably take it for granted. You don't even realize that it's a thing, but you know, travel to China, travel to Mexico, Thailand, some of these countries where they don't have the infrastructure for paper in the pipes. And you will realize, wow, you know, I really 
like just being able to flush it down instead of having a big pile of uh, yeah stuff in the, in the garbage can. So what about you? If you've traveled abroad and you've come back to the U.S., what are some things that you've missed? Thanks for following along. Remember to hit that subscribe button. Uh, I just met a guy here on the beach, uh, Tom Cook. Give him a shout out. He was mentioning he loves watching YouTube, so I know he's going to subscribe. So do like Tom. Hit the subscribe button, and I'll see you guys in the next video.